The CBC is a beacon for truth against fake news, according to its CEO, Catherine Tate, while the federal liberals claim that Canada just wouldn't be the same without the CBC. I'm Jasmine Moulton, and it's time for a reality check. This show is called Reality Check, but it really could be called Leftists Say the Darndest Things. And there's no shortage of silly statements when it comes to talking about Canada's national broadcaster, the CBC. But before we get to that, if you're watching on YouTube, please leave a comment because I'd love to hear what topics you want us to debunk next week. As you know, every week we debunk one common leftist myth in Canada. And so far, some of those examples include the rich get richer, poor get poorer, that Canada has the best healthcare system in the world, and that our schools need more funding. So please drop a comment below and let me know what topic you think we should cover next week. Now back to this week's topic, the CBC. I've said it before and I'll say it again. How many journalism degrees does it take to understand that accepting money from government is a conflict of interest in journalism? I mean, I'm not a journalistic expert by any means, but it seems pretty obvious that if your funding comes from taxpayers from the government and it's your duty to report on the government, that's obviously a blatant conflict of interest. How can you honestly report on a government budget, for example, if they're reducing your own funding? Do you think that's a great thing? No, of course you wouldn't. And this is probably why you see a lot of people in this space, especially in the CDC, who are pro big government, who think that government spending is inherently good. So even though there's this really obvious tension underlying the entire concept of a national broadcaster, leftists continue year after year to defend the CBC. Specifically, they argue that the CBC's funding should be increased for three main reasons. One, because the CBC protects Canadian culture and identity. Two, because the CBC is comparatively underfunded compared to international counterparts. And three, because our national broadcaster is tasked with providing local coverage. Let's debunk the left's first argument in support of CBC, which is that the CBC is necessary in order to build and maintain Canadian culture and identity. So the very idea that the CBC is supposed to build or maintain Canada's identity and culture might be laughable to you because perhaps you identify as everything opposite of what the CBC represents. But we still need to dissect this argument because it really is the number one go-to argument that leftists use in support of the CBC. But first it's worth asking, what is Canadian culture? What defines our identity as Canadians? You might say Canadians are polite, that maybe they're a little bit too apologetic, and often what comes to mind when you think of Canada and Canada's identity is that we're very multicultural, but not according to the CBC. Here's a CBC doc that was unearthed by my colleague, Harrison Faulkner. Take a look. Let me ask you a question. How many of you would trade places with a black person in this society? Raise your hand. I don't know the answer to that. Well, it's yes or no. Know, How many know. of you would do it? I know I wouldn't. I mean, I, I, I no, dated a Hispanic no. very dark. No, no, I'm not talking about Hispanic. The question is. But I was going to have, children. Children. Yeah. Was gonna have children. So I spent many years thinking of myself of having very dark skinned children. The question is. How many of you would be willing to trade places in this society with a black person? I think I would. Absolutely. I'm absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. absolutely. No. Okay. I'm not saying there's not racism. Absolutely not. It's just saying I don't see it. Yeah, but you know how not, racist this country not is. Not to the degree that you do. Oh, no, you right will never you. know. You know, in this country, we created the criminalization of black people. And when your skin is seen as a weapon, you're never unarmed. And that's why black boys and men and women are dying in the street with their hands up. What you just saw was a CBC documentary called Race to Dinner, Deconstructing Karen. Census data from Stats Canada confirms that Canada is actually one of the most multicultural countries in the world. In fact, hundreds of thousands of immigrants from all across the world choose to make Canada their home every single year. But instead, the CBC chooses to air this extremely divisive documentary that paints Canadian culture as the exact opposite. And this is precisely the problem with putting a few cultural elites at the CBC in charge of defining what Canadian culture and identity ought to be. Listen to this clip. This is Peter Mansbridge, who was a longtime news anchor and chief correspondent for the CBC, talk about how the cultural bias of the CBC is real. Uh, what I would say 
is that there can at times be an inherent bias that gives a Toronto-centric view of issues that confront our country. Um, and it's something that I, you know, uh, that we struggle here uh, against. I mean, I remember when I started my career, first 10 years in Western Canada, I used to thought all oh, those people in Toronto, man, they have no understanding uh, of what it's like here on the prairies. And all they ever talk about is their kind of Toronto issues. Now, I don't think that's entirely fair, but I do think there's a, it can be an inherent bias simply by the fact that some of the main players not just of the CBC, but in the national media, live in you know, the, the proximity of downtown Toronto. And so therefore they are affected, they and their families are affected by everything from you know, like uh, Toronto transit system, the Toronto health care, Toronto schools, Toronto sewers, the, you know, the condition of Toronto roads. And they're always thinking that stuff. And sometimes they, they tend to apply Toronto standards to their thinking behind the coverage of stories outside of, uh, of the city. So I, you know, I think that is a legitimate area to, to talk about. I don't buy the political bias stuff, never have um, at all. I, and quite frankly, I can tell you, when the conservatives have been in power, I hear from liberals saying we have a conservative bias. When, uh, you know, and, and, and when the liberals are in power here, you know, the same thing. This clip should cast a lot of doubt on the CBC's role as defining Canadian culture and identity. But what makes that role even more dubious is the fact that the CBC's president, Catherine Tate, doesn't even live in Canada. The story broke during the pandemic that she's been living in a multi-million dollar brownstone in Brooklyn, New York. And this is literally the person in charge of the organization defining Canadian culture and identity. So it's not surprising that the CBC gets Canadian culture and identity wrong so often. Now, I was reminded of this recently when the CBC published a news piece, not even an opinion piece, an op-ed given by one of its contributors, but a literal news piece published by one of its journalists, Brock Wilson. He interviews a now 21 year old, but this kid who talks about when he was 13, how he could have been radicalized by watching Ben Shapiro videos on YouTube. So if any of our viewers are unfamiliar, Ben Shapiro is a conservative commentator from the US and he actually has quite a sizable Canadian audience. I, for example, enjoy his content and watch it far more often than I would be caught watching the CBC. But of course that doesn't prevent the CBC from running this hit piece on Ben Shapiro and listen to the following quote from the article. I remember repeating some sexist attitudes, things about the wage gap, especially when I was hanging out with my guy friends. We were repeating all these things we were seeing on the internet a lot of sexism and misogyny. Like, really, CBC? I'm a 33-year-old mom, and I like Ben Shapiro. That doesn't make me a sexist or a misogynist. Which, as a reminder, mis a misogynist is defined as a person who's strongly prejudiced against women. Really, CBC? I'm strongly prejudiced against women. Simply because I enjoy the content of a conservative commentator that the cultural elites at the CBC disagree with. But of course, this is nothing new because the CBC runs a ton of content that runs counter to Canadian values, culture, and identity. For example, the CBC published commentary by an Elections Canada worker that painted elderly white voters and conservative voters as hateful and racist. CBC Kids claimed that Harry Potter author J.K. Rowling is transphobic and dangerous for saying that only women can menstruate. And last but not least, CBC Docs is airing a show called Drag Kids, which profiles children as young as nine competing in a drag show. A lot of Canadians would not identify with any of this content and beyond just simply not identifying with it, they'd find it morally repugnant. Based on these examples alone, the CBC cannot rightfully claim to be a cultural representative of Canada or Canadian identity. But even if the CBC didn't run some of these pieces that run counter to the identity of broad swaths of Canadians, the idea that any single institution in Canada should be responsible for defining Canadian culture is a terrible idea. By its very definition, culture should be a bottom-up phenomenon, not a top-down dictate. So ultimately, I think this reveals a sort of arrogance that 
anyone in society thinks that there are cultural better and that they alone can be tasked with defining what Canadian culture is or what our identity should be. So the idea that we need government to safeguard our culture is ridiculous on its face. Yet this is the argument that leftists often use to argue that the CBC needs more funding. And this brings us nicely into argument number two that leftists often make is that the CBC is underfunded. If you take a look at this CBC presentation deck, it shows that Canada ranks 15th out of 20 countries for spending on culture. Now, of course, spending on public broadcasters is a subset of government spending on culture. So the argument they're really trying to make here is, look, there's a lot of countries that spend a lot more on their public broadcasters than Canada does. Therefore, we should increase the CBC's funding. But the argument that they're making here is really a weird one, because if you look, Canada does spend more on culture per capita than other countries such as Japan, Italy, Portugal, New Zealand, and the United States. So is the CBC trying to argue here that Canada has more culture than Italy? Or does Norway, for example, the country that spends most on culture, does Norway have more culture than France? Of course not. The idea that government spending can increase culture is absurd. So the argument that the CBC needs more money really comes down to priorities. Canada's debt is growing massively, spending is out of control, and Canadians are feeling the pinch right now in an inflationary environment where many are teetering on the brink of being able to pay their bills or not. So the question becomes, is the CBC really that important that we need to increase taxes on Canadians or add to the debt burden, which is essentially just a future tax liability for the next generation? Is the CBC that important that we need to add billions of dollars in spending for it? And as a reminder, while many Canadians in the private sector lost their jobs during the pandemic, the CBC, which is apparently crying poor, handed out over $30 million in raises paid for by taxpayers during that pandemic. So this information was discovered through an access to information request by Black Box Reporter, and they found that the CBC during the pandemic gave out raises to over a thousand full-time employees totaling on average about $15,000 each. So it's a little hard to feel bad for the CBC when they cry poor after they hand out $30 million in bonuses during the pandemic. But of course, the best way for the CBC to make money would be for it to produce content that people actually want to consume. But as True North reported, the CBC is bleeding money and bleeding viewers. Ad revenues for English language TV programs fell by 37% from 2018 to 2019, and the CBC's total market share fell to a meager 5% in 2019, down from 8% the year prior. The total audience tuning into local evening CBC TV newscasts was only about 319,000 Canadians across the country. That's approximately 0.8% of Canada's population. Obviously, without viewers, your advertising revenue is going to fall. And the CBC annual report for 2020 to 2021 indeed acknowledged that advertising revenues were down by over 10%. But the CBC doesn't have an incentive to improve its content to attract more viewers, when in reality, all they have to do is just rely on taxpayers. And Prime Minister Justin Trudeau was fully on board for this approach because in his mandate letter to Pablo Rodriguez, who's the heritage minister, he said this. He actually tasked the cabinet minister with providing additional funding to CBC to make it less reliant on private advertising. So with less private advertising, now taxpayers are going to have to pick up more of the bill for the CBC. As a reminder, they already fund about 71% of it, meaning the rest would come from private advertising. The Prime Minister thinks that tax taxpayers should pick up a greater portion of that and also at the same time that funding to the public broadcaster should be increased. Now this is my favorite argument that leftists make in support of CBC that I love to debunk because it's such obvious math. They love to say that, hey, why are you so upset? The CBC only costs per capita about $33 per year for each Canadian. So for starters, this is bad math because they include kids in that population and kids, for the most part, don't pay taxes, federal income taxes, which is what goes to fund the CBC. So immediately you have to cut kids out of the total population that you're using in this equation. Also, what a lot of people might not know is that not all Canadian adults even pay federal income tax. In fact, one third of Canadian adults don't pay any federal income tax. So actually, when you only consider the taxpayers who are footing the bill for the CBC, the number is much greater than $33 a year. And the most obvious rebuttal to all of this is that why should any taxpayer have to pay for something that they're not using, a service that they're not consuming? 
And in reality, the CBC actually costs a lot more than the nominal funding that it gets every year because it's completely debt funded. So in 2021, the CBC costs $1.4 billion is the amount on in the budget that the government gave to the CBC. But the government was in deficit by over $100 billion that year. So no, it didn't technically have the $1.4 billion that it gave to the CBC, so that's debt funded. If you look at the average cost of interest on the government's debt for that year, it came out to about 2.15% is the interest rate that they were paying on their debt. So an interest rate of 2.15% on the cost of the CDC, 1.4 billion in 2021, actually means that taxpayers had to pay an extra $30 million or more in interest on the amount that we spent on the CDC. So sorry viewers, the CBC actually costs you millions more than you think. But again, the real question in all of this is why should any Canadian be forced to pay for the CBC when they don't watch or listen to it? And this brings us to our third and final argument why leftists think that Canada needs the CBC. It's all about local coverage. In today's media landscape, leftists will argue that there's not a market case to be made in these smaller markets, smaller local markets. They're not economic necessarily to run a newsroom out of anymore as more advertising dollars have gone to tech giants like Google and Facebook. They argue that the CBC should operate in these smaller local markets where there's not necessarily a market case to do so. But shockingly, as we saw during the pandemic, the CBC actually shut down its local coverage at a time that Canadians would have needed it most. Susan Margetti, who's the general manager of CBC News, Current Affairs and Local, said the following in a statement. As Canadians turn to us for the latest developments during these unprecedented times, we're temporarily pooling our resources into one core news offering. We are needed now more than ever, and we will work together across the organization to serve Canadians night and day with the trusted news and critical information they need for the duration of the pandemic while keeping our team safe. Simply stated, extraordinary times require extraordinary measures. Oh, the poor CBC. They don't even realize how they're shooting themselves in the foot here because a lot of their defenders say that local news coverage is their raison d'etre, that this is why they exist. But obviously during the pandemic, they couldn't even keep that alive. But this obviously does bring up a large criticism of the CBC, which is that they actually compete with private industry private media that could have otherwise popped up in the space. If it's difficult to run a news operation in a small local community, it becomes that much more difficult when you have a multi-billion dollar funded competitor to compete with. So here's a reality check. It is inappropriate that any government funded institution in this country should be defining and dictating what Canadian culture and identity are. If the CBC truly was a relevant cultural force in Canada, then more than 5% of the market would be tuning in. But of course, the CBC is bleeding ad revenue and viewership, but instead of improving its content, it instead just dips further and further into taxpayers' pockets. And it's all too quick to ax local coverage when the going gets tough. Frankly, the CBC is the last institution in this country that should be defining our culture and identity, and it's not justifiable as a taxpayer expense, especially in these times when taxpayers are struggling to even afford their groceries. It's beyond time to defund the CBC. That's our show for this week. Thanks so much for listening. If you like the work that we do, please support it. Please consider going to donate.tnc.news. Don't forget to make a comment. Let us know what topics you want us to cover next week. I'm Jasmine Moulton, and this is Reality Check. Reality Check.